Hey Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization 6 where we're playing as Ramses. As in, I'm gonna Ramses wonders into my empire. Magnus is getting himself established in Buto, and we do have the St. Basil's Cathedral churning away in Akatayton. Unfortunately, we don't really have any more chops over there. I mean, technically we could chop this forest here, right? We could buy that tile, chop that forest. But I think generally things are going okay. We have nine turns, nine turns to get 14 era score. Oof, that's gonna be a rough one. Let's have a little bit of a gander at the era tracker to see if there's any things in here that we can grab. Now, as far as I can tell, we have not unleashed the potential of horses. We've also not unleashed the potential of iron. So that's two right there. We could levy city-states and we have two city-states to levy potentially three if we can get another envoy we will get another envoy so we could potentially levy three city-states that's kind of let's let's start taking notes here so plus three cs levy plus two from strategic resource unleashed that's five we need nine more declaring a war with a Cass's belly is also a thing. Let's have a look. I could research Niter and unleash Niter in seven turns. So that would be plus three from strategic resources. So let's go ahead and pick up the cash to do this because I'm curious. Take that 580 gold. And then if I upgrade this warrior, boom, that'll be plus one era score. Now, what else can I do here? There's not many world firsts. This is quite tough to do. There's no cheap and easy wonders left for me to pick up. Well, I guess technically the Terracotta Army, but where the hell would I build it? The only th two that I can think of, I could get another six by luring great people. So that's nine in total. I would need another five. How am I going to get five more era score? Wow, that's, uh, that's actually really tough. I've met every Civ in the game. I guess I could find a natural wonder. Like, I mean, but I'd have to get lucky. I think based on this, I think I'm just going to accept that I'm not going to get another Golden Age. It's just too many points. It's just, it's just too many points. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it, unfortunately. It's not the end of the world if we can't, but I thought it was worth it at the start of the episode to see if we could just squeak out a win on that front. That's life. There's not much you can do about that when that happens, you know. It's just how the cookie crumbled. Looks like Geneva is actually getting murked by Arabia here, which is, you know, slightly unfortunate. What are you going to do? I can't stop them. So did I say Arabia? It's because they have the same, they have a similar color, so I always mix them up. It's uh, Russia. Do I want to get one more settler or do I want to just buy a ton of builders? Another settler could be pretty based. There's a lot of chops down here. Let's do it. Let's get another settler and we shall see how the cookie crumbles then. I, I, that's going to be my phrase of the day, boys. We're going to, you're going to hear a lot of cookies crumble today, okay? <laughs> All right, lovely. We got a theater square set up in Swinet. I would love to place a commercial hub. I will place the commercial hub right there. But I really, really, really just want the amphitheater. I do have a, another builder heading down here to help improve this city. And it looks like the anchor watch has been built by another player. So I'm going to go ahead and let that one go. I think, I can't remember, but I think in the last episode, the Kilwa went, which sucks. But what are you going to do about it? Let's keep selling off any resources that we can to be able to continue to afford to purchase builders out of Memphis. These seven charge builders are going to be great. Remember, we don't actually have to use their charges now, but it's super efficient for us to get them right now because they're 30% off and they will never be this cheap again. Alrighty, so I've got an interesting move I need to do here. Am I chopping out the campus? I think I am chopping out the campus here because I want to get to the University of saint Cor as soon as possible. So let's go for the library. We'll chop out that library as well and then we will chop out the university. But this city now has a campus that has been built relatively quickly. I think this is a open borders turn actually. I think I need to go through the list of players in the game. Grab open borders because if you have open borders with another player you get a 25% boost to your tourism with that player and if you get open borders with every player in the game that's basically like having 25% more tourism. I, I don't want to demand a thing. Sorry Peter. <laughs> Whoops. I did not mean that. There we go. Perfect. Open borders. We're loving it. Oh, we do have two little culture boys here in our empire. We've, we've attracted two tourists. Wilhelmina has a very strong culture, so she's going to be the one to beat here this game. It shouldn't be a problem for me, though. Unfortunately, I feel like there were more forests here and then somehow they all got chopped away or something or like not even chopped away. They just disappeared. I feel like there used to be more forests here. Let's buy the plantation tile and we'll improve the plantation tile. That extra food will help the city to grow. We want the city to grow so we can work the production tiles. And then 
I will also buy this tile and then I want to see what else can I sell off a little bit more of that which will allow me to buy another builder just trying to hyper optimize how many builders we can get here okay there's diplomatic service giving us access to the chancery we will do the merchantilism mercantilism let's pick up military tradition military training and naval tradition for the envoys and I'll also grab mercenaries for the envoys we don't need to rush anywhere we can take our time uh, Amani has been kicked out of Geneva sadly so I'm gonna go ahead and pop her into I think Mitla is a totally reasonable spot here plus two envoys in Mitla Mitla is inside my well basically inside my empire so I don't mind that let's do another chop for that university perfect and now we can get started on the University of Saint Cor. Do I have to buy the tile before it'll let me place it? There it is. University of Sancor, 88 turns away. That should speed up significantly, in my opinion, once we um, once we get the city running. I think if I can buy a granary and a watermill, we can get this a lot quicker. Because right now, the city's only making four production per turn, which is, like, you know, not enough. Pro tip, that's not enough gold. Or not enough production, rather. We could technically take charge of these marshes and then chop these marshes in order to force growth in this city, which I think is kind of an interesting idea. But that has an awful lot of validity to it. I'm also retooling the city over here, putting that in the right place. Excellent. I guess we can switch back to military tactics because we're not going for the golden age. We won't be able to get it. I tried so hard to lose it all. But in the end, it doesn't even matter. No golden age for us today, boys. Military training is completed. Excellent. So we do have a couple of envoys in the Bank of Reno here. I'm trying to figure out which one of these guys would be the most advantageous to us. I mean, Cahokia amounts are just really good in general. Like, these are super good for amenities. And we have relatively okay amenities. Speaking of amenities, let's go ahead and buy some. Yeah, that actually pushed six of my cities up into Tier 1 Happiness. So they're producing 10% more across the board. That is just a massive yield boost. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to plug out Charismatic Leader. And I'm going to go ahead and plug in Diplomatic League. So that the first envoy that I sent to the city-states will be doubled and then i can put one into cardiff i can put one into cahokia and put one into nagasgargumu and therefore maximize the total amount of envoys i have on the map now speaking of the city of memphis we have just finished the commercial hub i would like to get the market but the market isn't my main goal it is just a means to the end i uh, how close are we to getting a great artist we are not too far from getting an artist i think i would like to pick up an art museum and so I shall. I'll throw down an art museum. Over here in Rakadet, we have a harbour, we have an industrial zone, we have an aqueduct. We don't have our granary and watermill. We don't necessarily need those this game. I'm far more entertained by the idea of uh, grabbing myself a theatre square. I I I'll finish the theatre square here. Do I want to place another district? It's a great question. I think I'm happy with the city to be at 10 population. If I'm going to go for another district, I need to think about this. So I have the... Harbour, the industrial zone, the aqueduct. You know what I really want to do in here? I really want to do industrial zone logistics so that I have a chance of getting a good, great person who will help me build wonders. That would be perfect if I could make that happen. It'd be like super ideal. Loyalty over here is a little bit rough and I'm going to be going into a dark edge. So I think I want to settle closer to home. So I'm going to scooch over to the right here with this little settler. What are we doing? We're just exploring Coupe's lands. Yes, good exploration is happening. Wizard wars once again are happening inside my empire because I didn't go for my own religion this game. There's military tactics. We can get started on the incredibly important Huey Toakali. Let's shift Magnus over. I should have done this a moment ago. Although first I do want to chop, I think, this pair of marshes here. Boosh, that's the city up to three population. It will one turn itself into four population. Then I want to get the second marsh here if I can. I will buy the marsh inside Naken because it's cheaper to buy it in Naken and then I will switch it to Buto because uh, it's a third ring tile for Buto but a second ring tile for Naken. I really think it should just be the price of it should be based on the distance from any of your cities rather than the distance from the city that you're buying the tile in because you could just do the swap right functionally we would get to the same end point without having to have a little bit of game knowledge and a little bit of micromanagement mm, you know I, it, it doesn't have to be that way but it, it, it just seems to make sense to me that it would potentially be that way all right let's pop down this city i like this city it's got tons of chops we can totally figure out something we want to do in here i'll just go for the monument in here for now and i may chop this tobacco just to get it online so i can sell it for gold and then most of my inner empire is very well improved i think i will pop over here buy that tile and give it the old chop chop any purchasers of goods and re oh there are people who are willing to buy my resources beautiful i will sell off all of those i will buy that tile right there can i purchase another builder not yet i can buy another one next turn they do cost 420 whoa it's the weed number dude radical 420 all right, there's naval tradition we're loving it we give it a little chop then what are we doing here we get the granary we got an amphitheater in swinesse 
Art Museum is a potential. We could skip Art Museum and go straight for Archaeological Museum. That could be quite fun for us to do. We Generally, you want to get at least three Art Museums. So I'll tell you what, the first three museums I get, they will be Art Museums, and then the rest will be archaeological except in my capital because Pingala doubles oh actually I definitely want it in the capital I definitely want an art museum in the city that Pingala is in because this curated bonus does not work on artifacts we actually learned that in our last game so let me go ahead pop in here grab the art museum in here as well and this will massively increase the rate that we earn great artists I also need to think about my government plaza not like super important right now but it's kind of in the direction of being important I should also totally 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 be looking to buy some Ridley Diddley, googly oogly, great works. Uh, they're relatively cheap, 12 gold per turn, 14 gold per turn, 14 gold per turn, 14 gold per turn. Let's have a look at how that affected my economy. It's a lot of gold, but that's fine. We will start to benefit from these great works. I managed to get four. I don't really want to buy many more because I'll put myself into negative gold for 30 turns. Ideally, I would maybe buy these with raw gold. In fact, I can buy one with raw gold and another one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, much cheaper to do that. I regret I regret buying them for GPT now. I think I'm going to try to buy them with upfront gold from now on. But we have six great works of writing right now. And have we researched the printing press? We've not researched printing, so they could actually theoretically get their tourism yield double. But we are st we're just we're starting to scrounge little bits of tourism here and there in preparation for the future. Let's place the Huey Toakali. Grab Magnus. Well, we chop the marsh first. Boom. Now the city's up to six population, so it'll be able to work a lot of tiles. Excellent. It grows in one turn. And then we'll grab Magnus, reassign him to the city of Mendes, and then skadoosh. Everything is coming up, Millhouse. Skadoosh might actually be one of the most satisfying phrases that you can say in, in like the human language. Skadoosh. Like Jack Black, I, I think, I'm pretty sure he was the first person I heard say it. And it's so good. Right? 11 turns on the St. Basil's. That's actually pretty damn nice. That's going to be a great one. Might want to see if we can yoink a few relics from people if they have them. If indeed they do, they might not. Um, let's see if we can sell those off. Sorry, not sell them off. Uh, use them for tourism. Uh, city state emergency. If I were to pick up a little bit of Diplo favor, I could pass a city state emergency. So let's see. I'm going to buy this for 16 and buy this for that. That pop back up in here. I will pass that because it would be kind of nice if I could get people to declare war on Russia. I myself won't be doing it because he's actually quite a bit ahead of me technologically and militarily. I have a rather small army. So I'm a little bit scared. I'm a little scared. Scared. But it's a reasonable fear. It's a reasonable fear. We do don't need Huey Toakala. I mean, this could have been a Huey Toakala city, but it just didn't have the production. That was the issue. Okay, so we have the granary, we have the monument, we have the watermill. This city's churning along. It's making production. It's doing good things. It can build these in a relatively short amount of time. I think this might be a good city to get an encampment in. I could also potentially justify a holy site for the mid to late game. I think I'm going to get an encampment in case there's any potential coastal flooding I need to worry about. Or did I turn off coastal flooding on this map? I'm at, I think I set it to vanilla levels. Let me see. Settler. Yeah, so there, there's a little bit of coastal flooding. So I think having an encampment prepped for the late game is a totally reasonable thing for me to do here. It's 40% off because it's uh, less than the average number of districts that I have. Let's chop here. That will finish the monument. We'll use the overflow into a water mill. And these brand new cities are very, very slow to get themselves going. But they do get there in the end. They do. Yeah, people are starting to notice that I have so few troops, so I might need to do something about that. I'm going to vote this down. I wish I could just abstain. That would be like ideal and then let other people's votes carry the weight. So I hope I didn't spend too much money on something that doesn't come to fruition. Oh, it looks like it was eight votes. Maybe if I had voted it up, it would have passed. There's stirrup giving us plus one food on pastures as well as access to the night. Unfortunately, we're in a regular age. I think the most pertinent thing for me to pick up here would be... Probably new districts. We are going to build a few districts here in this era. We'll likely get one to two era score per city from that. Um, let's go ahead and finish military engineering. I'm going to put my scouts on auto explore because I am tired of micromanaging them. D like, do you ever get to that point in your game where you're just like, dude, I, I actually just, I can't. I, I can't micro this scout anymore. I'm done. I don't care. Just do whatever. <laughs> just, just go. Leave me alone. Stop asking for orders. Okay. I'm done. I'm emotionally checked out of our relationship. Right, there's military engineering. We have Niter, excellent. And we also got mercenaries, which will give us plus one envoy. We have two envoys in the bank. Do we want to actually get suzerainty of anyone? We could take suzerainty of Cardiff. Ooh, it would be nice to take suzerainty of Akkad, because that would be plus two error score. We were not the first to take suzerainty. Oh, I thought I was going to be the first. How odd. I thought I was going to get error score for that. I guess I didn't. Now, in terms of technology that we want to get to, we would really like to get printing to make our great works of writing more efficient. We also want to try to sell off more of our luxuries. And we shall continue to do so. Now, here's a question. How much is it for 
It's three gold per turn for 20 Diplo favor from you. How much will Russia buy them for? He'll buy them for seven. So I can actually funnel Diplo favor as long as it's cheaper than seven gold per turn to Russia. And this is a profitable exchange for me. This is what we. Uh, this is what's known in financial markets as arbitrage. <laughs> My finance fans, I, I hope they enjoy that one. A diplomatic favor arbitrage. Oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Oh, we did find Niter. Beautiful as well. Awesome. Probably want to get border expansion in here, but I'm not too worried about it. This city, I might just raw chop and not use Magnus. No, I should I should use Magnus as much as possible because the sheer amount of efficiency that you get from having Magnus for this sh like very few number of turns that it actually costs you to like make use of him is really really nice. Nicer online. I wonder can I swap this tile? Excellent. We definitely want to work that growth tile to try and get the city up to a healthy population. Uh, you got yourself killed. I literally auto explored that scout like three turns ago and he already got himself killed i scouts actually just have a death wish i'm like 99 percent sure that they just want to die which is not cool man you're a useful member of society far too many people watching this video probably relate to the scout which is not good okay listen you're all lovely you're all valuable and you all belong let's go ahead and grab ourselves we have a workshop oh we should totally get the aqueduct in here not only just for the housing but mostly also for the fact that it will buff this industrial zone this industrial zone is plus one we can bring it up to plus three quite easily i'm very happy to do so i'm going to leave this industrial zone logistics a couple turns from finishing because i don't necessarily care about isidore of Miletus. sorry uh, james of saint george is the, the i mixed them up my brain was like autofill we will just name a great person can I get the diplomatic quarter in my capital? It'll take me a very long time to get the diplo quarter in my capital. So I think I'm just going to grab it in here. And I don't really care where I place it. I just really want the... I just really want the envoys. Let's come over to Mendes and we will buy this tile. We're almost ready to do a round of chopping in here. Let's cancel the monument. Oh, the Huey's gone. Ah. Well, in that case, we can reevaluate our plans for this city. You know, some of these cities are new enough and not useful enough to really make districts that are valuable. So what we could do is do a bunch of preserve based stuff down here in the south, which I think I like the idea of. So I'm going to wait till next turn and we'll do a bunch of a Magnus chopping to get a preserve. Uh, in the meantime, let's finish that monument. Let's chop in here to finish the monument. We'll swing down. We'll grab the preserve. I'm going to put a preserve right here because I can national park right there and I should be able to national park right there. So that'll fit nicely. We'll do a chop. That'll finish the preserve. Now we build the grove and we chop for the grove. Perfect. Now the appeal isn't perfect, isn't amazing in here, but we'll we'll make it work. Um, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. And this will give me something to spend my faith on in the late game because we are not too far away from actually picking up conservation. I know we've done so many tourism games in a row. I'm getting a little bit of tourism fatigue. I don't know if you guys are. I do apologize. It's just a tourism heavy pack. What can you do? Oh, Russia has declared war on me. All right, so this is an interesting juncture. Right, so there's printing. We're making a little bit of stuff from that. Let's bring this man at arms up to the north. Any more units that I have? There's my Mariano chariot archer. Fastest way is for you to go to there. I'll bring my archer over to the east. I will sell off my, my luxury resources. And I had another archer. You're going to come this way. You will eventually become a crossbowman, but not right now. Let's go immediately to the ancient walls. Step across from the river. Hit this guy. Damage the catapults. City of Memphis, why don't you go ahead and grab me some crossbowmen. I will boost the rate that they're produced soon. I think I can defend this with very little in the way of actual units. Oh, Inca, what are you doing? Wow, this is like an extremely aggressive forward settle here. No matter where he goes here, he might get pressured by me. I'm going to move this trader. I'm kind of annoyed because I lost my, my trading post. I'm going to move this trader over to the east. See if I can't trade this way. Mm, there's a Russian horseman over here. That's annoying. Musketmen will come in handy here if I can get to them. We have an art museum in here. I would like to get me another crossbowman. Crossbowman will be the main way that I defend this, this push. If you have enough crossbowmen, you can defend almost anything, especially since I'll be able to put a man at arms in front soon. Put down... Now, here's the thing. We don't want to put down mines in this city. No. We're very close to being able to plant forests. So we want to be patient because we are one, two, three, four, five civics away, which is a decent chunk of the game. I will step over here and chop this though. Now, here's the thing. We only need to put forests on the tiles adjacent to to the national parks whereas this tile right here this can be a mine it's fine if that's a mine but we don't want mines here and here that's where the forests go it's good to use um, your pins as your notation devices let's go ahead and shift 
Magnus over to Sena. And I think chopping out wonders has now become a very inefficient strategy. We could maybe get out Taj Mahal, which would be handy actually for the era score, potentially scoring us some golden ages. Um, but I think it's just generally a low quality strategy at the at this point. This this deep into the game, essentially, is what I'm saying. We have a we don't have much of a need for chopping out wonders. Except for key critical wonders like potentially the Cristo Redentor. Uh, let's go ahead and head towards mercantilism. This pushes us in the direction of conservation. We have a trade route available. I would rather rather trade with someone else. I'm going to put this trader into a poo so I can trade with the Inca. You're going to hide in this city. I have no idea which city these guys are going for, but they are generally beelining past my existing ones. Go ahead and jump in the water there for me. You move one tile across the river. Move this way. Perfect. If I had row, if I had better roads, this would be quite nice. Unfortunately, I don't have better roads, so it's going to be a rough attack. That knight is brutal. What can I buy in here to provide attack power? What can I sell? I buy any luxuries? I can buy some luxuries. Okay, this will help. I'm going to try and sell off whatever I can to get as much gold as I can, because if I can get a crossbowman into the city, I think it'll help me quite a lot. A trebuchet in the city could also be quite interesting. Crossbowmen do more damage on average once they get promoted, though. Trebuchets are kind of interesting, though, for a uh, city defense. You could you could do some interesting things with a treb. Oh, my poor little horseman. He got hit hard. That's okay. We can retreat him. Right, you're going to step up and you're going to become a crossbowman. We really need to get rid of the catapults because they're going to do damage to the city for free. Bring the man at arms forward. Another archer is coming. Excellent, these tiles are being pushed. Is this a four? This is a six, so I can very happily chop this tile right here. Oh yeah, look at those yields. That's a beautiful, beautiful day. Um, We can put an interesting district right here. For example, theater squares, I believe. Give plus one appeal. Uh, there's a way to look. If you type in appeal, uh, plus one for each adjacent holy site, entertainment square, entertainment complex, canal, dam, or wonder. I wonder why this is written in here twice. Maybe this is the old tooltip or something. Who knows? Yeah, holy sites, theater squares, and entertainment complexes kind of chain well with this. Would I like a holy site? I think I would like a theater square. Well, the theater square is kind of expensive. The holy site's kind of cheap, and it will provide adjacency. So I'll go for the holy site. It's a very late holy site, but it will pay itself off in terms of national parks eventually. Let's get you to fall back to here to protect Thebes and provide adjacency bonuses. Trade with who? Trade with you. I choose you. City's taking a beating. Um, but we should be in a position to defend it. If I can get the man-at-arms in, that'll be another 10 combat strength on it. One. Horseman heal, crossbowman cross, archer arch, Mariani chariot archer. So two turns until walls go up. It's a little spooky right now. I think we can make this work as it stands. We got the Diplo Quarter and Rakadet. Let's get the consulate and the chancery. Not only does the consulate scale off of city-states. You can see there I'm getting gold, science, and faith based on the envoys that I've put into city-states. It gives me more influence per turn, as does the chancery. So basically, if you look up in here, you get plus two production for... for uh, You get plus two production in the city with the consulate when you're building wonders and buildings and districts. So really, really quite nice to get your, chan your consulate out, mostly for the envoys. But the extra little trickle of yields... Well, we won't turn our nose up at that now, will we? I may use Sena to do something mental which would be chop out settlers. That sounds absolutely nuts, but I think I could actually chop out an insane number of settlers from that city, which might be a great way to just claim more land. Because the more land you have, I mean, the more land you have, the better you are, right? Land is the sign of nobility. St. Basil's Cathedral is finished. Now, unfortunately, it's not on Tundra, so we don't get to see the giga yields, but it is yet another wonder providing us with a little bit of tourism, a little trickle of tourism. We're at six out of a hundred. We're on a good pace. So I want to kill, if I can, I want to kill this catapult before my walls are finished. That way, when my walls are are finished, there's one less unit that can do max damage to them. We've got the aqueduct in space. Let's go ahead and build our walls. I should probably plug in the wall card right now. I think that would actually do a lot of work for me. And um, this city is behind on a monument. Never got a monument at Akitate and went straight for the basils. But again, remember, like this wonder, when you hover over it, it's like plus two tourism per turn. And that will get better over the course of the game. You see, there's people already starting to visit the pyramids and we're only a few errors into the game. I don't like this Incan army on my border. Um, Inca, who are you at war with? You're at war with nobody. Do me a favor. Join my war with Russia. He needs a lot. 36 gold per turn to get him to join my war. Sure. Hopefully this discourages him from declaring war on me. So the walls went up. We need to kill. We need to kill this knight. We didn't kill the knight. I'm going to throw my horseman into that. Maybe the chariot archer can do it. Nope. Uh, we need to kill this man at arms. I can kill the knight. Okay, this is frustrating. If I shoot the man at arms and attack the man at arms, he should die. But I need to keep people alive. 
I need to sell off some resources. Please, God, give me some money. It's not enough to upgrade my archer. That's fine. The city got pretty low, but we've got it under control. Put a turn into an art museum. Uh, let's go ahead and take out retainers. Plug in bastions. Take out discipline. Plug in feudal contract. Take out serfdom. Plug in colonization. That way we can produce settlers. Perfect. Next tech, colonialism, because it's on the way to conservation. And then where the hell are you going? All right, we need to build a couple of sphinx down here. How far until we get flight? So we're quite a bit away from flight. We are going to want to think about how we get science. We 23 turns until University of Science Core. That should theoretically help with our science situation. And let's come into the city of Sena and we will chop for the for the settlers. Should be two, should be about two 2.5 chops per settler. Right, so let's have a look. Right, so let's have a look at the situation here. Um, I'd like you to become a crossbowman. I'd like you to kill this man in arms. You're ready for a promotion. Let's take Garrison. You're also ready for a promotion. We can delay for a turn to get Garrison. Totally fine by that. If you get this kill, that's fine. We've taken out all the chariots here. Or not all the chariots, sorry, all the catapults here. We did just finish the market. I would really like to get the... Intelligence agency, maybe? Yes, I'm going to take the intelligence agency because that'll allow me to steal tech boosts. In terms of the encampment, I'm quite happy to just grab a barracks. I just really kind of want to get an armory in there so that I can get military engineers when the time comes because I think some of my cities might need a, uh, a little boost. I'm going to chop here to get those walls that overflow will into a water mill. You're going to step to here and you're going to chop. There's another settler. I can send this settler out. God, what was this city? What was this city, my dude? What were you thinking? I mean, it's, it's kind of where I would have settled a city, but Jesus. What were the Inca thinking? 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 Doodle loop. Doodle loop. Now, we're uber broke right now, which is a feels bad man moment. However, when it comes to moral character, we've got that in abundance. So I'm not worried. Let's go ahead and kill you. Use the city to finish them off. So we've basically cleared out all the units that we're threatening over here. Let's go into Rack of Debt. I'll pop in the ancient walls here. The city should be able to survive five turns of assault. Now, unfortunately, we're going to have to get a plan to get Russia to go to peace with us, which will probably involve having to go to war with him, which I really don't want to do. Unfortunately, again, I just might not have a choice. That might be just something I have to do. More is a pity. Uh, in the city of let's go ahead and get started on the theater square. These are relatively late theater squares. Apu, you managed to get the water mill. Good job. Go ahead and get the granary to keep you going. This builder can head over here towards the chop zone. Welcome to the chop zone. I did lose Susan to you of Hunza. No, I was never Susan of Hunza, I see. So we have to kind of sneak this little settler through over here. Choose production in say. So we've got a little bit of a horseman running around. He's horsing around there, which I do not appreciate. Not one bit. I want him to get the hell out of there. I'm missing a... Oh, there's a... let's get walls into Swinette. It looks like Venice has declared war on me. I'm missing... Um, My brain. My brain forgot what I'm missing. I'm missing... Uh, dude, I have no idea what I'm missing. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something, but I lost my train of thought. Hey, look, it happens. Uh, let's go ahead and get the settler. We're going to chop, boom, for the settler. And then we'll chop, boom, for the settler. And hey, look, hey, presto, it's a fresh, a freshler, a, fr a fresh, a fresh, a fresh, a fresh, a fresh, a fresh, Do we want to go for a preserve in this city? Maybe. Maybe not. No, I don't think this is really a preserve city. Well, we could fit a national park in here. We could. It could be done. If we do a national park right here, although it's hard to get those tiles because Hunza is expanding. We could do a national park right here and a national park right here. Eh, it doesn't, yeah, nah, 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 Let's just do a traditional city, traditional, go with the sauce, all the trimmings and get some more settlers. Little bit of a problem over here to the left. Let's start moving the crossbowmen over that way. It looks like they might be moving in on Racket Dead. I should be able to defend that city without any problems. Wuhan just flipped independent to the Netherlands. Uh, loyalty pressure over there seems to be a little bit of an issue. Mm, so I want I want these guys to basically go in a cycle. So I'm going to move you to there. Move you to there. Move you to there. And then we're good to go. That's me done. I got my Niter, which will give me plus one production on my quarries, as well as a governor title if I was playing as the Ottomans. I am not playing as the Ottomans. I do want to get my walls up soon. TM, we're kind of in the... It's, it's around the time of the game, but you want to be getting your walls. But I'm going to do some basic stuff like buttresses, mass production. Here comes my crossbowman. Go ahead and shoot this guy. You got a builder on tow. I will place the Sphinx. 
Go ahead and shoot that guy right there. City of Memphis. What are you doing? Go ahead and get me a market. I could really use another trader. Well, I could also really use a spy. Get me a spy. I need to get those up and running. You only get so many spy actions in a game, so it's important to get them fairly early into the game. So I definitely don't want to use my horsemen in the upcoming fights around my capital, because there is a pikeman and men-at-arms. Although the men-at-arms aren't as scary, it's still a lot of damage for that poor little horsey boy to deal with. Right, shoot and shoot and shoot, and we are good to go. Apu. Whenever I see the city of Apu, I think of The Simpsons. What a, what a just classic show. Um, I'm going to sell off these fox arenas. I'm going to buy some luxurious luxuries. And uh, yeah, we're going along. I, we're probably heading into a dark age here, this era. I'm going to be real with you. Real, true, based, not cringe. We're heading into a dark age, okay? I need you guys to accept that. Mm, there's not enough pop pressure, so I need more population. Very well. We can make that happen. I'll buy this tile. I think this will be my last settler. I think two more settlers down here. That'll put pressure on this. And then I get another settler up there. So this should be the last one. One and two. Let me pop him out. And now we can make this city actually be useful. Like, for example, could potentially go for a campus. There is some tourism in the late game campuses, actually, I believe. Especially if we go for archaeological stuff. Um, there is some really good stuff. It's good to get your great people generation. In fact, it's around about now we should consider generating great people points because Mary Leakey is coming up in the next era. So we need to start getting those great people points so that we can secure her. 300% um, extra tourism from artifacts is bonkers. In case you weren't aware. It is one of the best buffs in the entire game for great works. And you should absolutely be going for it whenever it's within the realm of possibility for your empire. Right, let's go ahead and shoot that knight. He's going to get vaporized. Bum, 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 bum. Completely vaporized that knight. Walls are up and rack of death. I mean, if they do a little bit of pillaging, who cares, really? Uh, the most important thing is that he might be considering peace. And he is. And he will just give me a very small amount of gold for peace. That's fine. And now the very first thing you want to do, the second you get peace with someone, is get open borders with them, particularly if you're in a tourism game. And then uh, establish resident embassy if you can. Just try, to, just try to butter them up. Try to butter them up. Buy their stuff and uh, be friendly. I definitely need to get my hands on some relics because those are doubled. And we're going to go for natural history so we can start getting some archaeologists. And uh, we should probably actually start researching walls. And I should probably plug in the card that allows me to build walls faster. We're going to drop feudal contract. We will plug in limes. We'll drop bastions. And we will plug in conscription to save a little bit of gold. Could be nice to have craftsmen. Ooh, actually, I think the craftsmen would be better. We're not building settlers anymore. So I can finally plug in maybe some kind of wild card that might actually be useful. And I do like the idea of invention here to allow me to secure all of the great engineers. That would be, uh, I think this in total, this card is, I'm getting two from my two cities with industrial zones. Then I'm going to get another four from this card, just baseline. And then another plus two for every workshop. So I think that's actually, this is actually a plus eight, which is basically tripling how fast I earn great engineers. And great engineers can be quite handy in a tourism game. In particular, if you look at some of these late game guys, you know, you've got wonder building, that's always handy. Wonder building, that's always handy. You've got appeal, you've got um, appeal, and then range on buildings. I think James Watt is quite useful on that as well. Um, Nikola Tesla is quite handy. You know, generally these are pretty, pretty decent, useful things that you can get a hold of. And the AI tends not to compete too hard for industrial. <gasps> we could faith purchase this guy. Do we want to faith purchase him? No, I don't think so. We're going to hold on to our faith. Unless we think we can secure a golden age, we should leave it. We fully built a theatre square in here. We fully built walls. What do we want to grab ourselves next? I suppose it could be interesting to go for an entertainment complex. It would give me a few more amenities in my empire. It would open up opportunities. Um, a commercial hub might not be the worst idea. We already have placed the commercial hub. I'm trying to think what actually gets me tourism right now. And honestly, more trade routes without outside empires would be the thing to get me tourism going. So I'm going to go for that. I don't need to do anything else. Oh, I could get Susan G of Cardiff. Why not? Let's just grab it. It'll be a little bit of error score. Kind of like thinking about the error score that we need here. I think I would like a maybe like to go into a dark age here so that I could like a phoenix arise and have a more profitable age in the next era. Arise, uh, phoenix. Do a little chop chop. We got that library out nice and quick. That's going to be some good ass error score. It's time for us to claim a great person. Ooh, I'm going to skip James and St. George. I'll let someone else grab him. Let's have a look at the previously recruited. So she got that. I'm going to get Filippo Brunelleschi, which I'm a big fan of. I could get him right now if I wanted to. If I would want him. Could I justify him? That would be great to use him to get the industrialization. 
I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to faith buy him. It would have been awesome. And I'm actually even going to go ahead and do some industrial zone logistics because it would be nice to get Leonardo. Although Leonardo is less important. I might actually cancel that. But I totally want uh, Philip Obrudelewski to be able to get the Ruhr Valley. That could be a lot of fun. Let's go for the amphitheater and the armory. Get that armory up and running. Generally, things are going quite well for me here. And I have no complaints, no issues, no things that I am caught up about. We managed to get the consulate over here in Rakadet. I would like to get the chancery. I would love to build the theatre square, but the chancery is the next thing. It's plus three envoys per turn. Sorry, plus three influence points per turn, which will bring us up to ten, which basically doubles the rate at which we earn envoys. We have got Mendish going. Um, I think it's good to get the watermill, the long-term growth, production, everything that you need. Filippo, Filippo is good. Filippo, I want to teleport you over to the Ruhr Valley. And you're going to swap, swap, swap. This city, I'm thinking, do I want to put a national park here? If I'm going to put a national park here, it's going right there, which means I need to buy this tile, but I can't do that because I don't have the money. Anyone want to buy my little resources? Hey, we do a little trading. We do a little trading, and then we use all that money to boom, 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 buy those tiles. So I'm going to mark these out with the national park because that's where the national park belongs. That's where it should go. Awesome. Now, I don't want to build mines next to any of these tiles, but I could build mines everywhere else. Everywhere else is a totally valid place for a mine to go. And in fact, I think it would be better if I moved this national park, boop, 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 to here because, and hear me out on this one, I'll be able to put a sphinx here and that'll be plus two appeal. And then I'll be able to put a sphinx here and that'll be another plus two appeal, which will make these really, really high appeal tiles when I start planting all the forests and the woods and the wonderful things that make them a happy place to live. It looks like loyalty down here is actually worse than I thought. So I might have overbuilt settlers. That's not the end of the world. We can live with this situation. I would like districts built by me to be culture bombs and I don't particularly care which religion gets the extra 10 combat strength. It doesn't affect me. I don't care. I, you know, askers, any askers in the chat? But I think we've made some pretty nice progress. Our empire continues to grow. We continue to work on things. We have expanded rapidly and now we're heading into our tourism curve. We're almost at conservation. That's when the the chair clicks back into a 45 degree position and we launch ourselves into space. So I'm going to call that the end of this episode. And when I say space, I mean tourism space. I mean, we're going to just have a lot of tourism. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.